Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now the 12th gen Intel Celeron G6900 has two cores and two threads. It's got a suggested $42 price tag. Here in the UK it retails for about $45 to £50. The 3rd gen G1610 also released at $42 back in 2013. These days it can be found for just 10 pence here with a 24 month warranty from CEX. Despite 9 years, almost as many CPU generations and roughly £49.90 between them, both the G6900 and G1610 have the same core and thread count. While Intel have added hyper-threading to Pentiums and turned i3s into quad cores over the years, the humble Celeron remains unchanged. That said, from a performance standpoint, it's clear that two modern Golden Cove cores wipe the floor with two Ivy Bridge ones, even if both chips will still cause the occasional freeze when completing even the most basic tasks in Windows. But how does this performance difference translate into gaming capability? After all, most modern games will struggle with dual core setups, so is any advantage the newer 12th gen processor has from a processing perspective lost in a gaming environment? Let's find out. This is the 10 pence Celeron versus the 50 pound Celeron, or the 13 cents Celeron versus the 42 dollar Celeron. In CSGO, the 12th Gen G6900 can hit a decent average, though as you'll soon see there is a recurring theme of not so good percentile lows. They weren't too bad here with one particular area of the Dust2 map causing noticeable issues. That said, Counter-Strike is playable with this low cost entry level chip. The G1610 on the other hand still hit at least 30 FPS, sometimes closer to 60 but the 1.1% lows meant that the game was borderline unplayable. One minute you've got an enemy in your sights, the next the game freezes and he's behind you blasting. This test is for a bit of fun of course, I saw the price difference between a used G1610 and a new G6900 and I couldn't resist comparing them. It's also interesting to observe how these really low end parts have progressed over the years. Still for 10p and a 2 year warranty a G1610 might be tempting. What's frustrating about Cyberpunk here is that you can't play it on a dual core CPU without hyper threading. Well you can but you can't load a save game or continue where you left off. What you can do is run the in game benchmark test though it seems a little pointless. Still it gave us a good idea of how the 3rd and 12th gen parts compared with Cyberpunk getting double the frame rate with the G6900. Now that sounds good but it costs 500 times more than a used G1610. Wait is that right? I could buy 10 G1610s for £1, 10 times 50 the cost of the G6900. To make a G6900 worth 500 times more than a G1610, I'm going to need 12,000 frames per second here. <laughs> yeah, probably not doable. Is that maths even correct? I, I don't know. <laughs> Far Cry 6 didn't like either processor, with both hitting less than 20 frames per second in pairing with the 2080 Super. Now it's overkill, I know, but it means both chips can reach their full potential. The same results could probably be achieved with a GTX 1050 Ti, but you can never be too sure. I wouldn't call either result playable if I'm honest though, at least the G1610 is closing the gap here. There's not much to celebrate because as I said both results are pretty rubbish but this was expected I think. In GTA 5 the G6900 scored over double once again in terms of an average frame rate but suffered almost equally as bad when it came to the 1.1% lows. GTA is best played with a quad core at the minimum but remember this is less about the overall performance and more about how these two CPUs compare. Once again the cheapest 12th gen processor will do a much better job than the cheapest 3rd gen one. That said a socket 1155 setup will be cheaper than a socket 1700 setup at this point in time so for anyone looking to build a lower cost system with a more capable processor at the heart of it you might want to strongly think about a 2nd or 3rd gen i5 instead.
Finally, it's Fortnite, and again, the G6900 pulled ahead. After a couple of games, the stutters and frame dips became less common, though there was still the odd micro stutter. It didn't feel too bad to play, but these issues were significant enough to totally destroy the percentile lows. The G1610 also ran the game, but the frame dips never really went away, no matter how long I played the game for. It is clear that despite the lack of advancement in core count with Celeron CPUs, the actual power of said cores does translate to a better gaming experience, even if the dual core configuration is the obvious limitation across all of today's tests. Again though, this was just for a bit of fun and the results going into this were probably obvious to some of you, but it certainly been amusing to compare these two today and I hope you've enjoyed watching. If you did, leave a like on it down below, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.